Now, let's just go through a particle attribute, dynamic, the end particle attribute. So we create all new scene, give it a bit range. I put the 1200. Create end particles, create emitter. Okay, create end particles. Let's make them balls so we can see them better. And then create emitter. The emitter is the same as we went through yesterday. We have directional omnisurface curve volume, just like regular particles. All the same texture rate, particle color, all the same. Particles are a little bit different, so first of all, now with nucleus. We have thing, we have gravity, and we have wind. We have air density. We also have planes, so we don't have to throw a plane each time if you want to have something to bounce off. So if we hit here, we'll use plane. We also, you see the plane normal, we also can move it down if you want to. No, this uh, it's right here. It's in nucleus. So if you select a particle, you go on the right here on the fr for uh, right foremost tab on the right side. Yeah. You get nucleus. And you say use plane. And nucleus, you can do use a plane. You have a gravity already, so it falls down. You can make it up. So change that. You know, y direction. It will go up. So all down, minus one is all down with this, with an acceleration of 9.8 .9 Earth gravity. Now we can add wind as well. So if you want wind speed, let's make it five so we can see it. Wind direction will be X in X. There's some noise if you want some, you know, some hurricane effect. So you see if it pushes it in X directions. Air density, you can make more than one, so it, it will affect the particles more. So if you put 10, you'll see how far it flies. It's kind of more dense. You can do underwater simulations with, with this type. And make, let's add more speed. Let's say 10, and then there's a lot of noise. And you see it's kind of turbulence. It like throws them all the way around, that wind. And if you add more wind, 50. See how it blows? Pretty cool. So let's go back. Zero wind, zero noise. We have a plane here. We don't have to use it if we have our own stuff to do besides, you know, using plane, so very convenient because uh, with rigid bodies, you always have to adju uh, adjust the tessellation, things go, you know, uh, particles go through sometimes, the rigid bodies go through the plane that you created, this one, they will never go through. They know this is plane, and that's it. They will just hit and spread around that virtual surface. We have bouncing here, if you want to bounce a bit. Thickness get stuck. And now, uh, let's see, particles are too sticky a bit. It's fine. So, nucleus, what else we have? This thing like make it zero, friction, bounce like make it point 0.1. Time attributes. We can use start frame for all our part of all our dynamics that belongs to that nucleus. We can also we can do like we can keep we can have more than one nucleus and keep that in mind. So because sometimes you will create something and it will, it will throw like nucleus too, 
or you import something and you have a bunch of nucleus, nuclei, uh, like N solvers. So keep that in mind, in mind, and you can assign. Where is that? In Okay, never mind. All right, so uh, start frame, we can start from frame 20, for example. So we're on to all frame, easy to see, 300. So we go away till 300. Boom, it starts. So if you have like, if you have some character, character running and then hits the, you know, hits the pond or whatever, you don't want to, you don't want a simulation still, you know, running in the background for 300 frames. That's where you start. You say start frame. It will start from that frame. Scale. There's time scale and space scale. So uh, space scale, basically, things will go slower. It's like, you know, everything got 10 times bigger. So that's what space scale for. And time scale. So let's go back. See, it makes it faster. So it's point 0.1, same thing. We'll go slower. So between this, between time scale and space scale, you adjust your scene. That's for nucleus, particle shape. Go back to particle shape, same thing. We have, uh, we have count. Okay, count just gives gives us how many particles here. So, 441, for example, gives you number. Now, lifespan is the same, live forever or constant, like like we did yesterday. So we'll die at let's see. They'll die in a second. See, lifespan, same thing. Particle size. Just radius. Point two, let's keep it. And then here, there's a new stuff. Let's give it some life, some more life. <coughs> Just so we see what this, the, how, how does it, how does this scale, of the those ramps affect the scale. So we have a radius scale, and then here we have this, this graph. So what we can do, instead of putting a ramp like we used to, we have this visualization, and we can do, if we can open that graph, we can build all kinds of effects here, which is the same thing as, that, as the ramp I was showing you, when you assign the ramp to a particle scale, just, it's just neater, see? So if we scale up the particles, we'll see it better. That's it. That's our lifespan from 0 to 1. And this is how the scale will be on the particles. As long as they live, they go down and they grow up again. And it's, that's, the, that's the new stuff in, uh, in N, N, uh, N, N dynamics, N particles. Or you can just go scale. When they die, before they die, they become very small. And that's per age, radius, you can choose that per age, per speed, per acceleration, particle ID. So usually you do it per age, or normalized age. Yeah, even better. At least we have the all graph. Okay. Interpolation, we can smooth it out. So if we say smooth, you select each one of them smooth or spline. The graph, you see the lines become smoother. And we see it immediately. You see, we see the changes in right in there. Everybody follow me? All right. Next thing, uh, what else we have? That's the, uh, okay, radius. Randomize, we can do. We can do some random stuff, which is neat. No need expression, nothing. Don't have to, no programming. 
Let's randomize the scale. Don't put the rand number. Don't think about the numbers. It's, it's right here. So let's keep it as it was. Zero random. OK, we have collisions. Particles also self-collide. As you can see, they build, they kind of go down, and then they, you see how they, they pile on top of each other. That means they self-collide. If we disable that, they'll just go through. So they keep self-collide. And they also collide. Collide, self-collide, they just go through. Oh, no. They still have the plane. All right? That's good. So there's a collide strain, collision layer. If we want to collide with a certain object, we put them, and we don't do collide them with other objects, so we put those objects on different layer, or those particles on different layer. Right now at zero, it will collide with everything. Everything you throw around and call it, you know, a passive collider, it will collide with them, with those objects. And bounds, friction, thickness are shown already. Bouncing, you know, friction, you know what's that. Collision ramps, you can uh, you can control here, but let's not get into it. Okay, friction scale, you can all, you can do all this. Well, you can put those inputs for every attribute. So uh, dynamic properties. If you click and go ignore sol solver wind or gravity, it will. It will uh, ignore the wind of gravity, obviously. The thing that you have here, like gravity, for example. You say, I don't want to, I want, I don't want to, I want my own gravity. I want my, put my own field and for some reason. So I, I click ignore gravity, it ignores gravity. It doesn't go down no more. Same with the wind. Uh, mass, you saw that. Drag, conserve. Conserve is like particles, same thing, dynamic weight. You have my scale here. OK, uh, force field, that's interesting thing. Mm, where is that? Force field, force field generation. So let's make those particles emit particles, and we'll see.